What's up everybody, my name's Scott, and in this video, I'm gonna repair this sweater box which was assembled with straight nails and butt joints which have started to come apart after years of use. So stick around if you wanna see how to update an old piece of furniture, reassemble it, and put it back in use. Now this sweater box was built by my grandfather probably 15 or 20 years ago, and overall it's in really good condition. It's partially disassembled in this picture because the straight nails have completely come out of the end grain of the butt joints. But overall, it's a good sized chest. It's made of solid wood and I'd like to keep it because it is something that my grandpa built by hand. This chest has one main area that's accessed through the top and it has a cedar lining and then it has two drawers, one on either side. It's become a pretty important piece of furniture in our living room because we like to keep a lot of blankets for the New England winters. So with it being the beginning of December, it's about time that we fix it so we have a place to keep our winter blankets. The simplest joint to use when you're constructing furniture is what's called a butt joint. And in a butt joint, the two pieces of wood are just mechanically fastened with screws or nails. This is what a butt joint detail looks on wood in wood construction. You have straight cut, and there's no mechanical fastening between the two boards except for the types of fasteners. So in this case, straight nails. So what happens over time is the straight nails that are into the end grain of the wood will come loose and all of your butt joint will completely come apart. Here you can see the side panel. Again, this is connected with butt joints, but I can very easily pull on it and it comes apart. So that shows basically how a straight nail into the end grain of a piece of wood provides very little mechanical grip. When you're doing furniture construction, you have a couple options for mechanical fasteners. You can use staples, nails, screws, or even pins. For this type of project, the most common options would be nails or screws. In this case, I have some different screws we're gonna talk about and a couple different nail varieties to talk about. The first option would be like what was used originally for the nail. And this is a straight shank nail. I can look at the shank on the nail and see it's got two pieces of wire on there. So I know that this was a wire collated nail. It come in a strip or a roll and it was nailed into this with a pneumatic nailer. Um, typically there'll also be some adhesive on the end. These nails are really good if you're just fastening something that don't won't have anything pulling it off the wall. The other option would be something like this, with the, which is a ring shank nail. Now this nail has got rings cut into the shank of the nail and those rings bite into the wood and make this nail have a little more prevention from pull out. This was a plastic collated nail for shooting out of a framing nailer or a siding nailer and it also has glue on it. So either of these nails are acceptable options for doing a butt joint in this type of furniture construction or even in a dresser or a chest of drawers. But in a butt with butt joints, I, I would always recommend backing it up with wood glue. So basically the wood glue takes the load and the nails are just there to hold the parts together while the, while the glue dries. So one of the things that limits my options on this project is I can't use glue. For whatever reason, when this thing was built originally, it got stained on every edge of the board. So the end grains of this wood have been stained with, with stain. So glue will never dry to that. I have to sand every single edge and that's gonna change the geometry of the part too much to make it work. So as far as I'm concerned, nails are not an option because I can't use the glue with them. So that brings me to my next choice, which would be screws. So this is a lineup of the typical types of screws you're going to find in a hardware store. And these are of different lengths, but there's one that represents pretty much every option. So I know this box is made out of softwood, so it has to be something with a, with a coarse thread. It can't be a fine thread. So what you have here is a standard drywall type screw. This screw is okay for something like this. Um, one of the big limitations to a drywall screw or any of these types of screws, the head is not decorative. So you would have that Phillips head everywhere on your project. And these are not a structural screw. This is a sheetrock screw. It's meant to hold wallboard up. So stepping up, you get something like this. 
This is a structural deck screw. Very similar construction, but the materials are different, so it's got a structural rating. But again, it's got kind of the nasty large head on it that wouldn't look good on furniture. This is more typical of what people would consider a wood screw for this, you know, for these types of applications. Um, so that is an option. The next would be something like a pocket hole jig screw, which again, it's a, a coarse shanked self drilling. And then the last style of screw you might find is just something like this is a standard wood screw. So those are all okay options. And up until recently, that's the only options you had. But recently, screw manufacturers have started making these, which are sold as trim screws. That's designed to be countersunk into the wood and it gives you a really nice final finish. So I'm going to use this type of screw. Now that we know the style of screw that we want, um, I headed out to the hardware store. Home Depot only had two options in my area for this screw. One option was a GRK screw, and it's 100 screws for $10. Or Griptite now offers them, and Griptite, and again, it says on the box it's new. This is, this is new. These are new. This isn't something that's been around a long time. Um, so it's, it's going to be really good for furniture repair. So again, it's a number eight. These are inch and five eighths, but it's a it's 175 screws for the same price. So I went with the grip right. I've in the past I've gotten the GRKs because they were the only thing available for a trim head screw. So in the future, I'm gonna look for the grip rights. They're about half the cost. They they're gonna do the same exact thing. They're zinc plated, they're rated for interior use only. I think you can get the GRK's exterior rated. I'm not 100% on that, but these are ones I had from a previous project. So right on the box here for the for the grip right trim heads, it says for interior use in wood trim or fine carpentry. So their intended use is, is things like this. So that's what we're gonna use. No glue, just the screws. Basically, we've gotta bust this whole thing down, take all the joints apart, take all the nails out, line everything up. I think I'm gonna to have to countersink, but I shouldn't have to pre-drill because all the nail holes are there already. So let's get after it. saw earlier these trim head screws they're kind of new they use a special Torx driver so when you're at the hardware store buying these make sure you buy a, a driver bit for them so this is it this is the whole project you take your piece of board that you took off small hammer if you can't get them by hand you could use a you could use a small crowbar, you just have to be careful, you know, this is a finished part, so I don't want to damage the wood if I don't, you know, have to. <clears throat> I did have a little split on this first one, so the next one that I do, I'm going to pre-drill. One of the things I didn't mention earlier is when my, all this furniture that my granddad built, he bought barn wood from old Amish farms down in, in New Holland, Pennsylvania. And uh, so a lot of this wood is a hundred or more years old so it get wood gets very it can get very dry and once it gets this type of this dry uh, it cracks really easy so it looks like I'm gonna be pre-drilling all these holes because I don't want to split these out the screws are already really close to the edge this is the the detail on those trim head screws so they're sunk in about an eighth of an inch so if you're doing a project and you wanted to fill them you could use putty filler and then stain them i think probably what i'll do is get black paint on the end of a q-tip and i'll go around and just dab them all with a little bit of black paint but that's it basically replace every single nail that was in this with those screws
Now right here in the video, I'm going to look for a drill bit to counter sink these heads because I was still having a small problem with the wood trying to split on me and I didn't want to risk it at all. So far I'm really happy with the results on this top. These screws are working out really well. Um, again the only other option for this would have been to use ring shank nails in an air nailer which I don't have so I would have had to spend $40 on a box of collated nails and probably $150 or $200 on a finished nailer so uh, I spent $10 on the, on the screws and I spent $6 to buy the bit, the good bit. Um, so I've got 16 bucks worth of materials into this and it's gonna fix up this chest that my granddad made So I think that's a really good deal That's gonna just about wrap up this repair on this blanket chest. If you're thinking about doing a similar repair and you're trying to find a screw, please check out these Griprite trim head screws. They do an excellent job on reassembling old furniture like this, or even if you need to sturdy up a piece of furniture that's just starting to get loose and not fully coming apart. Please like, comment, and subscribe on the video and the channel. I really appreciate everybody's, uh, everybody's views as I try to get this channel up and going.